to the ring. Welcome to Post Purple versus Waynesburg. Uh, so there's a little bit of a miscommunication. Apparently two matches have already gone. And the current stock count is going to be Post is in the lead right now. Nine to Wayne's seven. Okay. So they ban Small Battlefield, Battlefield, and Smashville. So I think we're going into a Yoshi player. Uh, this is NECC style tonight, everybody. So this is going to be four on four. So right now, Post is only down one player right now. We're just under halfway through the first round. So if they are banning uh, Battlefield, Small Battlefield, and Smashville, based on this stage list, uh, kind of get a look at it. Battlefield, Small Battlefield, and Smashville. As a character, Yoshi, I mean, has a lot of versatility. Can kill off the top with up air, uh, can kill off stage with back air, drag downs with back air. Really solid character, especially uh, like general zoning with egg can be sometimes frustrating on certain char against certain characters. I feel like, I do feel like though, maybe bring Yoshi to a flat, flatter stage, like maybe bring him to FD, 
but it kind of depends on what character you're bringing into it. I don't think I think it's very hard to counterpick a character like Yoshi. I don't think it's really what can you bring to the bring to the scenario with your character. I don't know who played first for post. I know I just I right now I know that Kenny's down, but it looks like BK is gonna be sw <laughs> swinging in. BK is gonna be coming right in with Dark Samus. Now, I don't think this is a bad choice, actually, because, again, Samus is very good at anti-airing. It's one of the best characters at anti-airing in the game. Uh, and the entire game plan is around anti-airing. Especially with a lot of projectiles. Two, one, go! And Yoshi, as a character, does like to jump a ton. He has some of the best air speed in the game, best air acceleration. I think he does have the best air speed in the game, actually. So it's, if you can keep Yoshi in the air, generally Samus might have a easier time. But the thing is, high airspeed means Yoshi can also be very mobile. Wow. <laughs> Trying to get the, a lot of that damage off the top. Weak hit. Ooh, I thought that was going to be a, uh, I thought that was gonna be a, uh, a uh, confirmation into neutral beat. Trying to anti here with the up You have to be very careful about that, though. Yoshi can get the... Uh, it does have a command crab and can punish you for a lot of these faulty landings. Zare's probably going to be pretty good in this matchup. Drag down with Fair. Not going to get the proper follow-up, though. Really weird interaction with the KD kits of some attacks. Mm, bomb. <coughs> Not able to punish these landings. Up B. It's been a little while since either player has ever, like hit each other. <laughs> Both taking their sweet old time. Trying to get those up here. Nice roll away to get out of the fair. No jump. No jump. Anti uh, this is a in those situations when Yoshi jumps like that, you can go you can try and contest him. When he uses his jump, you can there's not much you can do. He has to like do B reverse neutral B in order to get around a bit more effectively beyond his air speed. Really good back air. Go cross stage though is not going to be a, uh, early enough to kill. Ooh, almost getting that neutral. It was actually a really good aim on that. It just was a little misspaced. Uh, you gotta get, do not be above Yoshi. Up air is so strong on Yoshi. And kill him off the top pretty decently. Y Yoshi at 182, though. A lot of things on Samus' kit will kill at this point. Up throw. Yep. And that's going to be a clean stock for BK. Putting Wayne down to their last six stocks. Halfway through the match already for Wayne. I will say BK did a l very good job keeping horizontal distance from Yoshi. If Yoshi is above you... Uh, it's really tough. It's really tough hitting Yoshi when he's directly above you because he has pretty good jumps. Boots are really hard to contest, so he can kind of land on you relatively safe, safely. But uh, BK just did a really good job keeping it more horizontal and not getting caught in a lot of those Yoshi traps. Now, I assume BK is going to want to keep it a bit more flat for his stage choice. Though up air is really good on, on triplat stuff. I'm assuming he's going to be banning like triplats or some of the dual plats. If I'm Samus generally, though, I'd probably want to keep like a flatter stage, like Final Destination. Dual plats are really good for Samus. And the mid platform is probably pretty decent. I think, I don't know, Samus is just incredibly versatile. I don't think Samus has a bad stage. Uh, and especially the top mid platform. Oh, what am I talking about? The top mid platform on Battlefield is a really good place to land with Samus up B out of shield. Samus's weakest stage is honestly probably town and city. Probably because of the uncertainty of it. Or maybe, uh, maybe Hollow Bastion special. I don't know.
Either way, we're getting Byleth. And I do think that this as a matchup is in really good in Samus' favor. Um, Byleth isn't the most mobile character ever. Does have a does have mobile options, mobility options, but general run and airspeed is not the best ever. Byleth definitely relies on a lot of <coughs> big hitboxes to kind of mitigate that distance traveled. And it works out a lot sometimes. But Byleth definitely has some weaknesses. And I think Samus can take a good chunk of advantage on those. And this is kind of what we're seeing now. Like, a lot of that horizontal range, Samus is going to win out on almost every time. So things like Zare is going to cancel out a lot of these moves. Catching jumps and whatnot. I like the song choice. Good shield. Re wow, I'm surprised he had enough time to actually punish that with another F smash. BK doing a really good job playing that mid let to long range area. Zare doing so much work. Oh, good job shielding that back throw. Yep. Ooh, that was the right call. But, jeez. Pilot has one of the best recoveries in the game. Can fade back super far and still make it back. Really good timing. Back throw. The bombs, 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 bombs for days. Bombs for days. Ooh, I'm sorry they did not shield poke, actually. Really good up. That was a that was a panic up B. I will acknowledge that was a panic, but it was a really good option, honestly. Oh my God, the parry! Wow. And cross up on the dash attack. Fading in. Right now, Bible is just having a really tough time, kind of connecting a lot on too many attacks. BK is doing a really good job shielding when it, when it counts. Oh, no, you can't do that. You cannot charge off stage because you're going to get hit by, by, by the Super B. Putting post down to eight, and Wayne sneaking in another stock, put down to five. Falling out of up B, oh my god. Roll. Uh, BK's being a little too aggressive at ledge, and I think it's getting a little predictable. Back air. Back, I like the feedback on fair. Violet's not going to be able to uh, contest that. A B for the anti air. Zare on shield. I'm actually surprised Nair did not connect. Violet's Nair. There's just so much chip damage happening right now with these small projectiles, Zare and whatnot, and it's very hard for Byleth to win neutral in these situations. When you are putting up these like little tiny dinks in the wall, the mo Byleth's limited mobility gets even worse. Um, having to like travel around a lot of these small projectiles makes it super tough. And <laughs> the bomb. There's just so much happening against Byleth right now. Ooh, weak hit of F smash, not gonna do a ton. The timing on these neutral getups is very risky for BK, um, but doing a very good job, kind of getting having a ton of shield. It's a dash attack, yep. I'd grab, grab an up throw. I think you're up. You're getting really close to kill range on up throw. Now you're there. And that's it. <laughs> they didn't recover. <coughs> BK at 86 now, though. Oh, the weak. That was a weak hit of F Smash. And it still killed. Jeez. Evening out the stocks right now. Uh, that did not hit her leg. I'm super surprised. Uh, he doesn't have a jump. He, he doesn't have a jump. This is really bad for BK right now. He does not have a jump. Oh, wow. Sneaking it out. Then that's the tricky part. He burned his jump. And then got contested off stage. Really good stuff coming out of Byleth contesting BK in the air like that. Once he did not have a jump, Byleth can pretty much do whatever you want. And BK tried stalling out as much as possible, but the second he got around, that stage bike was ooh, tricky. He needed to recover a little sooner than what he did. Maybe a higher recovery. But otherwise, if he gets hit, he needs to make sure his tech is on point, which is super hard online. That was such a turnaround coming out from Wayne.
uh, right there. So down to four stocks for Waynesburg, and Post down to six. Making the deficit down only down to two. That was such a big turnaround. And that's the, that's the thing. Smash, you know, Smash has a lot of neutral interactions. A lot more neutral, I would say, than, you know, most fighting games. A lot of fighting games are, you know, have, like, you know, their own set of neutral, and then you go into your combo strings, and then your block strings, and things like that. And then, you know, eventually the block string needs to end, and then it's the, the, the opponent's turn, and neutral resets. However, Smash is less about block strings, though there are some, but less about block strings, less about combo game, though there are combos, and more about general neutral and advantage versus disadvantage. It's a lot more heavy in that spectrum. So, with that in mind, even that doesn't really matter, because Smash is a stocks-based game. It's not by damage, it's not by life bar, it's by stocks. So you could be ahead in percent super far, but if your opponent is able to get those sneaky stocks out super early, oh boy. Doesn't matter how many times you win neutral in Smash. Doesn't matter. You're just losing the stock first. Good stuff out of B... Honestly, though, beyond that last stock, BK did a really good job playing the matchup. It was just... That, that's what that's why resource management in this game is so important. The second you burn out a jump, you take that massive risk. It looks like we're getting Crimson in right now against Byleth, which I actually don't know how I feel about this matchup. I feel like Byleth might have an advantage, to be honest, because Terry wants to get in and hit you in the face, and Byleth is fine with that. Byleth is fine with zoning you out or being in your face. With something like Nair, Nair is such a versatile tool, it's so strong against Terry. So Terry just needs to be on the entire time. He, he can't be mid-range at all against Violet. He needs to be on Violet the entire time. And if he's not on Violet, then he stays out of Violet's range and waits for his opportunity. Tag down there. Jab, jab into side B. Up throw. Trying to get, trying to catch an air dodge with that up tilt. Not gonna catch it though. Yeah, and that's not gonna be safe on shield. Reading the power dunk with an angled up, with an angled forward smash. This Byleth is catching on, man. Wow. Waynesburg turning up. Only one stock deficit now. Yeah, and I'll, that side B is going to be so good at catching jumps, especially Terry's jump. Jeez. Power wave putting Byleth right back off stage. Mm. Okay, side B putting Byleth off. At this point, you need you don't give up too much stage control. You need to ledge trap. Grab that power dunk. That's not going to be enough to kill. No way. Ooh, land hit a side beat. That's good. Oh! I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry they didn't confirm. But that... Yeah, that's the cross stage. That's not enough to kill either. 163 on Byleth, though. Not, there's not many things that on t that Terry has that won't kill. <laughs> there being one of them. I would not go off stage against Byleth at this point. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you take a massive risk with that. Terry needs to stay on stage with something like this. Grab. Grab, grab, power dunk. That will kill, yeah. Stage. Post down to five. Okay. And Waynesburg down to three. That was a little scary to be honest, starting off. Losing such an early stock with that power dunk. Still able to get the percent off and snagging the kill for a post. Really good stuff coming up from Crimson. I love this song. Genova is such a good song. From Final Fantasy VII. It's one of my favorite Final Fantasy songs in general. Now with Crimson out, uh, I don't know who played first. Did Great play first? Because it's Kenny, Crimson, Great. Who am I forgetting right now? <laughs> I 
who's the fourth right now? Oh, BK. What am I talking about? BK. So, yeah, okay. So it has to be great. Wait, then who went first? I don't know who went first. Now, this is going to be really good. For, I think, in general, this... Is this the right stage? Oh, I think this is... Wait, do we even have Northern Crater on here? I mean, it's FD, but can they do variants? I don't even... I don't know what the rule is. I don't know if they can do variants on stages like FD and whatnot. Yeah, and we don't have Northern Crater as a stage. So there's probably a dispute about the variants. Because certain certain rule sets, you can't have a variant of like FD or Battlefield. Because you, in theory, in every stage in this game, has an FD and uh, Battlefield variant. But certain rule sets don't allow you to do that. You need to play on the actual FD or actual um, Battlefield. So sorry, but somebody's outside. I am so sorry. Somebody like walked into my yard and was taking pictures in my yard and I was so confused about what was happening. So sorry about that. They they were taking picture of deer in my backyard. <laughs> but uh looks like we have uh one stock left on the on uh Crimson right now. Yeah, they are spies. They are spying on the game on you know they're spying on the game plan. <laughs> <laughs> they are from Waynesburg. <laughs> exactly, BK. It was so weird because like they just start, they just walk in and she's just, like she just like this. It was a couple and they walk into my yard and they're just taking pictures and I'm they, they, they have a car parked out front. I'm like this is so this is so weird. All right, I should probably actually get to the game. The thing I'm actually should be here for. <laughs> By 134. Uh, this could be an easy anti-air with with power gazer. Um, oh no, yep, that could that could be an easy kill too with Gordo. <laughs> I am so sorry, but that's gonna put Post down to their last three, and Wayne down to two. Oh my god, today's been a mess, dude. Today's been a uh, complete mess. I'm all over the place. People walking in my yard. I have to go from place to place all day. Missing Smash. I'm so sorry, everybody. Missing the first two games of this. Oh, man. 
So, um, I'm pretty sure... Sh- BK, who played first? Is, is Great the last person in the lineup right now? I, against a character like DDD, I feel like a lot of characters just do really well against DDD. Sure, DDD can be annoying, especially at ledge, and you can, you know, getting back onto ledge against DDD can be kind of annoying. Um, but I feel like Gordo is such a such a, a, a important tool in his kit, and so many characters can just swat it back. Especially if you're a projectile character. Oh yeah, and great. So great can just fair. <laughs> Gordo, okay, I fair. Throw it right back at you. It, I, I think I do think a lot of characters just do very well against DDD. Sure, Bowser has to commit and he has to go in on Gordo, but Gordo's not that impressive of a projectile, in my opinion. Three, two, one, go! <sighs> now, I will say though, in this matchup, uh Great is going to have to be super careful at ledge, uh, trying to recover against DDD. He's such a big body, it's going to make it super easy for DDD to, you know, hit and back out the ledge. Though at 97% already, yeah, and DDD's going to like to jump off ledge because he has such a, a tall jump. Shield. Uh, landing over there. Mm, not not going to be able to sneak out that back air. Oh. Tech situation. Air dodge in. <coughs> Back air. Really good neutral get up. I would like to see more aggression against Gordo coming out of great. Good side B. That's going to kill. Yep. Sneaking out. Putting Wayne down to their last stock. Nice jump out of shield. <coughs> up throw. Into fair. 43%. Back air is going to kill them. Yep. Putting post down to their last two. Wayne down to one. There. Ooh, it's shield poke. Down tilts for days. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a down tilt twice in a row. Ever. Down throw into Nair. Not going to be able to connect. Back air. DDD at 106. We're getting into kill range now. Sure, DDD's big, but Bowser is strong. A little bit of charge on that up smash. Just enough to take that stop. Putting post up 1-0. <coughs> oh my god. I wish I could stop coughing. Now we're back 12 to 12. Now at the top of the order... I don't think Post has to do anything. You guys... <laughs> I don't even know exactly how you played it the first time around and you're already ahead. I don't think you need to do anything. I do think that... Waynesburg, he needs to shift it around a little bit. Hmm. I mean, DDD is a good anchor character. He can get snowballed a decent bit if he's not able to get Gordo in. Uh, you could maybe put DDD closer to the middle of the lineup. I, I don't know, but y because I saw Yoshi, DDD, and Byleth. Maybe put Byleth closer to the front? No. I don't know. I don't know who the first character was, but I think that it needs to be a, a, either they need to solidify their gameplay a little bit or make like some sort of character switch. And with NECC starters, we're going to either see Battlefield, Smashville, Town and City, Pokemon Stadium 2, and Small Battlefield. We're going to see either one of the, any of those five. It's usually PS2. 
the bands be the bands. BK. Bunky Kong. Bunky Kong is here. <clears throat> Does BK stand for Bonky Kong? <clears throat> oh, yo, know, I thought I did for a minute. You, s hey, you suck. You're making me believe and making me think, feel like uh, I'm smart or something. I don't know what BK stands for, and in my head, it stands for Bonky Kong. Forever and ever, you're Bonky Kong now. Oh, well, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get an arena disconnect. Okay, yeah, we're getting an arena disconnect. Um, because they need to attach a new controller and get a new control scheme going, which you cannot do mid arena. In order to get a new control scheme going, you need to disclose, you need to shut off the arena. So and they gotta close it. Forever, you're forever Bunky Kong now. How come we're not closing the arena? Alright, I guess they figured it out. Never mind. I guess they had the control scheme going. They're good. So we're going right into it. Waynesburg is ready to go. And let's see who Eagles sends in. I assume Kenny again. Why Eagles doesn't have a reason to switch up the lineup. Unless they feel like having fun. Like in a different order. And yeah, we're getting Oh, we're getting the run back right off the start. Wow. I love it when they do these. <laughs> we're getting the run back the Thug finals right off the start. <laughs> One, go. Gotta go fast. You're DDD. You can't go fast. 20% though on Bowser. Let's see what Great's got. Reading the air dodge. That was so smart coming out from BK. Reading the air dodge with side B. That was so cool. Keep air to catch the jump. Fair again to catch the jump again. Oh, that's gonna get punished. Miss spacing the down B. Jumping right over the fair. Uh, that could have been up B out of shield, I think. I don't know. It's so hard to see to, to understand how you can damage how you, how you can kind of contest some characters and airs in this game. Spot dodging both hits of jab. That was so weird to watch. Back air, put him right back out. Right now Bowser at 117, but DDD has lo losing stage control little by little. We're catching the jump with side B. That's not going to be enough though to get the kill. Runoff fair is though. Wow, setting up that, setting up good positioning, set up for that fair. Really good stuff coming off from Drake. Fair, no, I'm to up air. Gonna get trying to read the aggression, but not able to get the punish. Up air is gonna send. That was such a weird angle for up air. Usually up air sends behind me. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Don't up air. Nair. Uh, up tilt is going to snag the stock, though. Evening out the stocks right now. 11 to 11. Oh, up air. Jeez. Ooh, not, that, uh, that's tricky. When you do stuff like that, I, I, like, I like it as a mix-up, but when you do down B at ledge like that, you give up stage control pretty hard, and you, 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 ha you get the risk of like, getting ledge trapped yourself. Second half jab's gonna connect. Flame breath. No flame breath to contest that. <coughs> Nair to up tilt. Good DI going behind DDD. Nice good 
to get up. Take your time. Fair. This DDD likes to jump from ledge. It seems like really good upbeat. Going for the low recovery. Not enough to get the kill off at 146. Oh, that's bad. Oh, Naren. Oh, ledge trapping was stinky. That was some stinky ledge trapping coming out from BTDD. And that was an extra stinky back air coming out from from uh, Great right now. Oh, geez. Evening stocks out. 10 to 10 right now. Uh, trying to anti-air with up tilt. Oh, Nair. This is tough. As Bowser, you don't want to be above DDD. Up air. Good up B to punish the Nair. Oh. Bowser's Nair is so shallow. It's so hard. Sometimes it's really difficult landing with it as like an effective neutral tool. Good grab and the down throw. I don't know if it's throw, actually. No, it's down throw. Ooh. Flame Breath is going to get punished. Jumping right over the grab. That was so interesting. Oh, great out 103. This is looking really tough. Oh, you got to shield that. Trying to get the cross up with back air. Gonna get that shielded, though. Oh, up, B, up air is gonna send it that weird angle again. Don't, don't, don't care. Just take your time. Great's gotta take his time. You can't be too quick on it. I would contest Gordo a little bit more. Because you can do that. You can just swing, and Gordo is gonna send right back. You can roll in. Oh, gro the, the, oh my god. Gr great wanted to side me so bad. But Waynesboro's DD is just going to give a grab in kind. Back air, not strong enough to get the kill off on DDD. 108, though. Another one will snag it. Oh, no. Up tilt is going to stake that. Yep, yep, yep. That is such a strong kill move. Putting post down to nine. Wow. That was... Wow. <laughs> that was a good match. I like that one. I will say, I do think Great gave DDD a little too much room to work with. Um, he was, well, sorry, that's not the right way to word it. I, I think Great could have, I think the big thing is swing at Gordo. Because when DDD's throwing Gordo and you're shielding and trying to get a, a navigate around it, that that's not, it gives DDD time. And that's what you don't want to give DDD is time because then he swings he has the opportunity to see what you're going to do to react and I think you, sometimes you're better off just hitting Gordo right back at him because then he needs to react to it himself he needs to either shield or he needs to swing again which he can do that he can swing back at it um, he can use Gordo to send it back too but I think shielding Gordo gives DDD so much I think the fact that you shield it gives him so much information and so much time to react to what you do. And I think BK played around Gordo well, but why play around Gordo when you can just swing? Just, just swing fair, hit it. Makes it all the more difficult for, for DDD. <coughs> Especially in those ledge trap situations, I think that's what the biggest thing that got great uh, a little caught. Whereas all these ledge situations, some of those, like, kills that were determined by that, it's just Bowser's such a big body, it's very hard for him to navigate Gordo. So that's why you generally just want to, like, just swing. Just get it out of the way, get it out of there. <coughs> now with BK, with a character like Dark Samus, BK doesn't need to worry. <laughs> Projectiles for days. Gordo doesn't stand a chance. You build the wall, Gordo can't get in. So, and we're going to see that. We're going to see Missile interacting with Gordo a ton in this matchup. Neutral Bees, Zare is going to be a good factor in this as well. Uh, bomb 2. Anything. Anything's going to connect with Gordo and just be a, be a bit of a problem for DDD. Oh, you're a little too low on that. Good Zare. Sending it right back. And down thrown to Fair. Good shield, good shield, back throw. Oh no, going for the damage, actually, that was very smart. You you, you do give up a bit of stage control to go for that combo, but I do think the damage at this point is worth it. Good there. And 
this is the distance that DDD kind of struggles, is this interesting mid-range where Gordo just kind of pops. No, you can't get up attack. Get up attack is one of the toughest things to do against DDD, because you take so many risks, especially when involving Gordo. I would almost never get up attack against DDD. Oh, grab. And that's the problem as well. You need to throw out your projectiles in a way that's going to connect a little better with Gordo. I like to go the Zares and whatnot, but when Gordo's out, you need to either jump into it a little bit or throw out, you know, or back up off a slight bit. And that's going to put those stocks put down on post to 8. Wayne's still at 10. Nice, let me get back. Oh, up throw and up air. Nope, that's not going to connect. 129. A lot of things. Why? Wow, that was such a weird direction. Good roll. Oh, the quarter is being so tough on BK right now. Back air, not gonna take it. I don't know. He had a jump. Okay, he's made his jump. <clears throat> oh, that's the, the that was the, that would have been such a good confirm. Unfortunately, the back air missed, putting BK down to six stocks, uh, seven stocks. Post is having a little bit of a deficit right now. In the fair, yep, that's gonna do it. Post down to seven. Wayne down to nine. So Wayne with a two stock lead. The reverse of what Post had before. This is tough. Now Post needs to adjust a little bit more. BK down to their last stock. And considering the character lineup from before, we had Byleth, Yoshi. It was Byleth, Yoshi, and then I didn't see the last character, the first character they had. So I don't know who they might send in now. See Byleth? You think we're gonna see Byleth right now? I would assume we're gonna see Yoshi. Otherwise, we might see the uh, character I didn't see. I don't think there's any Byleth against Samus. <clears throat> now, with the stage list, Samus is gonna generally like. Any stage. <laughs> Samus is so good. Dark Samus is so good. I don't think you you again, you don't you don't ban stages based on Samus themselves. You you typically ban stages based on player feel, like what the player is comfortable on. And you also ban stages based on your opponent's character. I just otherwise I think Samus just does very well on whatever she really wants to do. She's too good! Honestly, in that matchup against uh, DDD, I probably would have liked to see BK throw out, like slow missile a little bit more. Just mi more missile in general. I feel like that would work in like contesting space. Zare was working really well. <clears throat> but we're getting Byleth. Now, this is an interesting choice because... I know the Byleth took the game last time around against BK, but BK was in the lead almost the entire game. Maybe percents went a little too high for B for uh, 
for Waynesburg. And that's what that was kind of BK's downfall. Was that, that such an early kill? But uh, otherwise, I think BK has such strong neutral against his character. Uh, that, mm, yeah. That's tough because I don't know if Fair would, act would have actually connected at that percent either. Oh no. Oh, he held on to his jump. Good. For a second, I thought he used his jump. <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> High profile that. <laughs> fair? Are we gonna see run off fair? Nope. Good patience. I would not have run off fair. Good, 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 good. Good neutral B before they catch a landing. Ooh, that, that did not connect. Ooh, shield poke on the neutral B. Interesting. Good anti air. 90% on Byleth, only 26 on BK. The. Th these could be VK stocks to even it up, to be honest. This is... Back throw, though. That's going to be tough. Good shield. That's going to be a grab. Back throw. I like the bombs. Bombs are a good idea. Back hit it down smash. Going to send the opposite way. Missiles. Not up throw. Yeah, F throw. Good, good, good. Gr that was such a good anti here. That up B is so quick. It's so stupid how good that move is. <laughs> oh. Right now, and it's like so. Violet just has such a tough time getting on on Samus. It's the the slow mobility can be really tough if you don't know how to necessarily navigate some of these items. Because when you're in shield, I, I, shielding can be good, but you generally want to run up shield. You don't want to be standing still in shielding against Samus. Yep. Now, I think this is BK's opportunity to take one more stock. If BK can win a few more rounds of neutral, I think this next stock is very do doable for BK. Ooh, that's going to clank with neutral B, though. Good jump. Also, don't be charging off stage again. I remember that was one of the kills that happened on BK where he was charging um, and he got hit by arrow. Don't, don't charge. Ooh, going. Oh, wow. Wow, that was actually super smart <coughs> coming out of Byleth because, all right, there were a few layers to that. BK was at the percent where that up B will spike. So you run off fair, try to contest it. BK goes, okay, I'll drift back. No problem. So then BK decides to jump over. And when you're over Byleth, that's a problem. That was a frame trap and a half, I, honestly. That was actually a very smart frame trap. Yeah, there's a, there's a certain percent where, I guess, Byleth just... You die. <laughs> it, Byleth decides to go off stage, and either way, you die. That, that up B is so nasty sometimes, man. But that's going to put Post down to six. And Wayne down to eight. <clears throat> so still, a two-stock deficit. But I would say, bring in, I would say at this point, bring in, uh, bring in Kenny. That's what I would say. I, I think Kenny would be the smart pick here. Especially against a character like Byleth. I think Terry can do well against Byleth, but I do think Byleth has a bit of an advantage with some of the disjoints. It can be a little tough. Dude, Eastlug, how's it going? <laughs> I do think Kenny would be the right choice here. I really do. I think Kenny would be a good pick against Byleth. Sure, Byleth has some stuff on Snake, because if Snake decides to recover high, Byleth can up B, and that's kind of a problem sometimes. But I think overall, general neutral... Snake will be at, a, at an advantage, especially with how uh, Byleth likes to engage with Nair. I think that will be in Kenny's favor. But no, we're seeing Crimson. Now, this now, not to say this matchup isn't doable. I, I do think that it's a very doable matchup for Crimson and Terry. 
the problem is you need to get in. And you need to stay in. Because Byleth has such a big nair. Nair's gonna be the problem item in this. Byleth's nair is just really big. And things like that will con interact with Terry. Where Terry doesn't have many disjoints. He, he re really relies on just being in your face. Unless you want to use Power Wave as like your approach tool once in a while. Which can be useful. But against a character like Byleth, who has so much range, it's not amazing. That was a really good combo. With the up throw into up air into up B. Uh, waiting to see the option. I like the patience. I like the patience. Left tilt. <laughs> Dash attack. and to send Byleth right back up stage. 103. And here's the kind of the problem. Things like F tilt on Violet. Yeah, that shouldn't get that one. That was kind of some poopy DI though. Um, F tilt. It's it's gonna be very tough for Terry to punish things like F tilt in, in there, but just because of how shallow a lot of things are. And that angle down F, F smash. You have to be you have to cover so low. Yeah, he, his, he has no jump. He has no jump. Yeah, and the neutral get up is gonna get hit by that F smash. Why about? Oh my God! <laughs> Dropping shield a little too early. Gonna even out the stocks, stock trades. Right now, Crimson really needs to take the stock first. Quick twenty-four mm, percent. Oh, good air dodge. Gotta get that punish in. But now you gotta recover. Oh, that was actually such a good crack shoot, to be honest. We have roll out. Don't roll in. Don't roll. You. Never roll in against Violet. There's so many characters in the game you should never roll in against. When in doubt, roll out. Back throw again. Good recovery. Jab, jab, power dunk. And that's not going to be it. That's not going to be it. That's not going to be it. Oh my god, that was it. That killed. <laughs> oh my god. I was I'm pretty sure there was good DI there too. But that was so close to not killing. That was so close to not killing. I'm actually surprised I killed. But really good job coming out from Crimson, putting post down to five, but making the stock deficit one less, so Wayne only at six stocks. Jab Jab Power Dunk, um, it's kind of crazy, to be honest. It kills decently early, but I didn't think it killed at 100% at, on a character like Byleth, who's kind of a, a little heavier. Not, like, super heavy, but a little heavier. I don't I don't think that would have killed, but it, I guess it's enough. Jeez. So now Crimson's got two stocks left. Generally, you want to keep the stages as flat as possible or as small as possible. One of the two. And that's why these crew battles are kind of tough, because I think you pick your stages and then you pick your players in these, or maybe you pick your players and then do your bands. It's hard to say. I think uh, no, I think in this specific format you pick your players and then you do your bands. You might see the Yoshi. Yep. Okay, yeah. Players, then bands. Okay. So you can... You can react to certain things then. If you're going against a character like Yoshi, then it, I'm def definitely as Terry. I would try to get to as flat of a stage as possible. FD or something. Because Yoshi's story... I definitely wouldn't bring Yoshi to Yoshi's story. Because Yoshi can kill off the top probably more consistently than Terry can. Because Terry can kill off the top with his up B confirms and whatnot. But Yoshi just says up air. <laughs> he does a stray up air, and it's it's like kill off the top. So I would probably bring Yoshi to like something like FD if you can. Maybe Kalos, but that oh we don't even we don't we're not even getting Yoshi. We're getting Isabel. <laughs> now I think Terry wins this matchup pretty handily. Um, it's about mobility, getting around mine and whatnot. But you just gotta be careful of the command grabs when you do jump because fishing rod is definitely. <coughs> I think on paper, Isabel is a really good character. On paper. But there's something about her in this game. It just... It doesn't come together. And I don't know exactly what it is. It might be her mobility. Um, 
I, I don't know. The fact that she has that command grab should be a lot better than Villager, but a lot of people consider Villager the better character. I, I just don't know what it is exactly. Oh, dash attack. Here's the problem, though. I will say, if you don't know how to navigate Isabelle's attacks, it can be very tough. Especially with things like Fair and Bear. Fair and Bear are really annoying. Oh, to the chab, just sending him right back down. Fair off ledge. Sometimes against Isabel, you're better off just shielding at ledge and waiting for her to kind of hit your shield. Up smash? No. Yeah, no way she's dead. Power Gazer! Not, Isabel's light, but I guess not. Uh, jab, jab. There we go, and that's going to be cross stage. Super strong. Power, Buster Wolf is so good. I do, I think, is, oh, yeah, that's good. Cool. <laughs> Isabel confirms off of mine can be really cool if she up airs into it. But they happen so rarely. Jab, jab, power down. Kenny needs to take, uh, sorry, Crimson needs to take the stock right now. Especially if, actually, this is kind of a problem because Isabel has a good matchup on Snake, too. So, Crimson needs to, if, if he can, really take care of this Isabel right now. Because Kenny going into Isabel can be very tough. She has so many tools that can actually work really well against Snake. I'm gonna catch a landing with side B. I think I think Crimson's giving up a bit of too much stage control against Isabel. He, he, he's liking he's backing away a little too hard at ledge. Jumping right over mine. I like Power Wave to get rid of the mine. Yeah, that's gonna take it. Yep, 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 yep. Sixty-five percent. Can Crimson take one more stock? Oh, that is. Ooh, he jumped at the perfect time. That, that fishing rod jump and fledge is super strong against Terry. Side B. Go meters online. Mm, you have to be careful backing away. Oh, that fair leads right into that mine. 147. Ooh, the explosion catches him in his jump. Power gazer. Oh, he tried to power gazer. I saw it. It didn't come out quick, quick enough. That's going to be a kill, yep. So against that, I think you need to DI behind Isabel to live a little longer, but I don't think you would have lived either way. With the, me catching somebody on platform like that, super strong on Isabel. Putting Post down to the last three stocks on this round. And Wayne down to four. Crimson did well. Crimson did pretty well in that matchup. But now is the hard part, is that Kenny is the anchor right now. And Isabel has a good matchup on Snake. Dumb good. It's surprisingly good. Pocket. You, you get grenade. Uh, fish, fishing rod grabs grenade. You throw it right back. Uh, mine makes it... You know, you essentially have your own C4 that you can fight Snake with. For stage control. And it puts him into a really precarious position because Snake does not like it. You know, Snake can recover from high up, but he does not want to be put into disadvantage like that. <laughs> and especially Fair and Bear, they can be very good poking tools against Snake. Isabel doesn't really need to commit against Snake, and that's why it's so good. Yeah, it does. It will grab grenade. Like not out of not out of Snake's hand, but if if Snake tosses it up, fishing rod can just grab it. He throw it right back. If you're throwing back Snake's grenades at him, it makes the matchup a decent amount tougher for Snake. And the fact that Isabel has such a strong tool to grab grenades from so far away, it's kind of silly. It makes it, like, a lot more manageable. <laughs> Where's the dog? The dog's coming. The dog is coming. She's coming. Isabel's a coming. Isabel's knocking.
<laughs> Ken <laughs> Kenny's the bulldog. He's got this. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs> Oh my god. I think Kenny's got this though. Kenny's really good at being mobile. As long as Kenny's mobile, he'll be good. If Snake's in shield, that's the problem. Snake shouldn't be in shield too much in this matchup. He should be moving. Well, uh, that's kind of a lie. He needs to shield a lot against Fair and Bear. But if he's shielding near Isabel, mm, you get a risk of you get a big risk of getting grabbed. It's tough. I mean it's tough. Snake's got to be mobile. Can't be standing still, but he also needs to shield fair and bear a decent amount. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, she can also pocket Nikita, which is kind of a problem. <laughs> she can pocket his snake's up smash too and throw it right back at him. <clears throat> Good thing Kenny's the master of, of forward smash and not up smash. Now, Banjo, in theory, has a really bad matchup against Isabel. But send me in. I know that matchup dumb well. I haven't lost to an Isabel in a long time. I know the secret to that matchup. Throw me in. Tag me in. I'm the Bulldog. <laughs> we got Kenny down. Kenny's the Bulldog. Kenny's going to show him how it's done. <laughs> Animal Crossing music. It's cursed on this stage. <laughs> uh, though I will say there is one benefit. Kenny only has to deal with one stock. But if Kenny loses a stock, oh boy. That's tough. Ooh, going... Oh, oh my god! Why would you F-Smash? It was such a good idea, though. <laughs> it was so good. That almost connected. Oh my god, Kenny, if that up smash connected, I would have... <laughs> I don't even know where he comes up with these ideas of where to place up smash. But right now, Kenny is at 54%. That's looking mighty tough. And that recovery is going to get caught. Kenny needs to recover perfectly every time. Oh no, you you, get, you, ha you, you, you let her plant that. You can't let her grab. You can't do that. Four. Kenny's already at 103. And we can kind of see where this, this matchup is getting a little tough right now. I, will, I think the grenade is working for him, though. I think he needs to do more grenade. <laughs> we hit the back air. Oh, gotta be super careful where you land. And Snake's air drift is not the best, so it's super hard for him to find a proper spot to land. F tilt. Recover. He has to recover high. No, you, you can't recover like that. What? Cypher saved him! He was dead. He was dead. Cypher, the blast of the Cypher saved him. Oh, uh, yeah, Balloon is going to intercept with Nikita, too. Up tilt. Oh, my God. Kenny! You're so lucky, Kenny. You were dead. Kenny was so dead from that fishing rod. <laughs> he was so dead. But Cypher saved him. That was so funny. Wow. Wow. Kenny, look. Kenny, look. Kenny did well. When Kenny was placing grenades, Isabel wasn't making use of pocket a decent amount or fishing around to catch a grenade. So Isabel was really kind of having a tough time with a grenade. Whenever he placed a grenade, he was doing well. It was a good idea. But he was also getting caught a ton in fishing rod, especially when he recovers. And that's the problem. Snake's recovery is very predictable when he decides to recover low. It can, it can get manipulated. And he needs to recover low sometimes. A lot of characters in this game need to recover low sometimes. It's, it's risky otherwise. And with Isabel, she can just place Rod and wait for him. Especially if Snake's back is turned to ledge. He can't grab on the ledge. Makes it super hard. <coughs> so he was getting really... Um, it was difficult for him in those disadvantage situations. But in a, we saw it with Fishing Rod right at that last moment. But Kenny was able to rack up the damage and get that sneaky up tilt in. And make it even out 3-3. Three to three. Super cool. <coughs> Big brain. <laughs> Calculated. Look, cipher hits are never calculated, bro. I know, I know that's a there's that's the meme. <laughs> you know what? Fine, we'll give it to Kenny. 
He knew what he was doing the whole time. Sure. He knew what he was doing. Cypher was definitely planned. Where'd they go? Where'd Kenny go? <coughs> Where in the world is Kenny? Why do you leave? <coughs> now, super, super, super important that Kenny had those three stocks left. Super important. <clears throat> Kenny needs... It's going into this next match with three stocks as Snake is amazing. Because Snake... Even if Kenny gets, you know, behind. Even if <coughs> Kenny's losing off the start. Snake can turn around stocks pretty decently. Though I will say, this is a... Intri this is actually... I'm pretty sure this is a... Uh, oh my god. I think Inkling wins the Snake matchup, if I'm not mistaken. Though I will say, Inkling is a rare character nowadays. Are we on FD? No. Okay, somewhat close, though. Ink on a stage like this can be very tough. Yeah, up throw, up air. That's the tough part, is interacting with up air, because up air is the kill confirm for Inkling. Nice grenade into back air, putting 30%, already evening out the percent. F tilt. Oh, landing right... Oh, that was a missing point, I'm pretty sure. Landing right on Ink Bomb. This is tough because grenade, deal, grenade against Inkling can be tough. And right now we can see this Inkling does not want to commit, and that's fine. Like Inkling, this is Inkling's playing it the way it should be. You have tools to deal with Snake's zoning capabilities. Why not stall it out? Ooh, good, good roll, good roll around a roller. Yeah, Inkling's taking, taking her time. If I'm Kenny, I'd just stay on the opposite platform. Oh, that was almost confirmed. Good roll in. You have to be so careful as roller. I do think Kenny does not have a reason to interact with Inkling right now. I think Inkling really doesn't want to interact with Kenny, but it should be the opposite. I think Kenny's committing too hard in this matchup right now. Yeah, back air from the roller. Ooh, not able to get the grab. I think Kenny needs to back off more. He just needs to hug pl the opposite platform that Inkling's on and kind of put the wall up with grenades. Falling into C4. I'm pretty sure that C4 just exploded on its own. Good timing. Oh, wow. I can't believe that grab connected. He has such a big grab range. That's crazy. Yeah, this Inkling's taking her. Full time. Ooh, the, the aerial hit is not going to bury. That was a really good grenade, but it was, the timing was a little off. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a very cautious fight. Inkling doesn't... Inkling has such good mobility that she can be careful, but I do think... I really think Kenny is committing too hard. He has no reason to approach. And, and now a percent, he kind of does. But I do think he can afford to stay on the platform a bit more. That was such a good Nikita! The wall bounce was untechable, and that's going to put the stock in Kenny's favor. Those are situations that Kenny is going to thrive in this matchup. Inkling is, does not have a great recovery against Snake. Good Nair. Wow, that was a good follow-up into Nair. Footstool. And now here's the thing. Now that Kenny is in the lead, Inkling needs to approach. Inkling has to approach. And that makes the matchup all the harder for Inkling. Look at the percent difference now. It's completely different than it was a second ago. Because now Inkling understands that I need to approach. I need to do something. I need to snag this kill now. And Inkling has a really tough time killing. Um, against Snake, the up throw up air combo is probably a bit more consistent. But still, you need to commit to it. And that's why Kenny, you know, generally in this matchup, should probably back away a lot more. It's because then Inkling has to commit to something and try and get the kill in. And right now we're seeing it. We're seeing it super hard. Kenny at 172, living, making these stocks have worth 184. Mwah. Super worth. Oh, runoff fair, though, is going to connect him, evening out the stocks. Inkling at 156, and almost anything on Snake is going to kill at this percent. <clears throat> he wants to up smash, I feel it. <laughs> I want to see him do the up smash, too. Uh, really good grenade, putting Inkling at 171. That Inkling really does not want to commit. It's super funny. Up tilt. Roll up up tilt. Oh, down, down smash. Up tilt. Yep. 
<laughs> if you if you miss the up tilt, just do it again. Grab the down throw up tilt. Yep. Up air. Wow. Really quick percent. Grab tilt. 65. Now we're seeing Kenny really get his stride. Now that he's in the lead, he's feeling a lot more confident in his movement. <clears throat> Taking a bit of a risk right now. But Inkling has to take such big risks. Oh, back air. Trying to get the follow up into a grab, but he's going to miss. Really good group <laughs> shield, but wow. Oh my god, that was actually... Oh, if that was an up smash, that would have confirmed. This Inkling player has a really good idea of the character. But not able to get on Kenny right now. Really good shield, not able to get the punish though. Up tilt, up tilt, down tilt. Good grenades. Kenny's grenade placement has been super good. B reverse, no. Good grenade, not going to get the C4. 157. So many things are going to kill. Dash attack. Not quite enough. 171. And C4 is going to take it. Putting post 2-0 over Waynesburg. Now, that was such an interesting matchup. Just Kenny... <laughs> Kenny was a little uncomfortable in the first half. And I would say he was definitely... As I said, he was committing too hard. He was really trying to like deal damage to Inkling. And I get it. But on a stage like that, where Inkling can kind of stay up and ink as much as you can, it's it's not really how you want to start the matchup. And we kind of saw that. Inkling was really keeping the percentage lead the entire time. But then we got to the point where Inkling needed to, you know, secure the kill. And that's when it gets tough. Because Inkling only has runoff fair at ledge, up throw, up air, roller. And, you know, I probably would have gone for a few more rollers if I was the Inkling to secure that kill. I think Kenny was on the ground a little too hard. But still, Kenny was able to steal out that stock first, and that was super important. Because then Kenny doesn't have to worry, because Inkling then has to commit. And then, you know, once Kenny's, you know, zoning with grenade, feeling a bit more comfortable, playing the mid-range a lot more, we saw the percentage, like, really transfer over. It was super... It was That was a very interesting matchup, I will say. But that, either in either case, Post is going to take it tonight, 2-0 over Waynesburg. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Eastlug, BK, Ryan, thank you guys for joining it tonight. It's been super good. Good job tonight, BK. You played it super well. You played super well tonight, BK. Uh, otherwise, I've been Frisco. And uh, let's see if Post Esports 2 is doing anything. Avis Gaming Association, but is Post U Esports doing anything right now? Yep, Post uh, no, they're not. So I'm going to, I'm going to raid Avis Gaming Association. Copy. And I'm going to raid Avis. Thank you guys for joining tonight. Again, I've been Frisco, and we are going to see you guys next time. Thank you again, and we'll see you.